that it doesn't make sense we come here Sunday after Sunday and we still don't know where we are going. We have no aim, we have no desire, we have no determination. We just come and go through the motions and go home. It makes no sense. We have to know where we are going. We have to know who we are and whose we are. Hallelujah. So saints of God, just worship him as if it was the last day we have on earth. I'm going to ask a question. What if we had woke up this morning and found that the rapture had taken place and we are still here? I want to think about that. What if we had woke up this morning, we found out the rapture had taken place and we are still here? When we come into the house of God, we need to worship him as if it's the last day we have on this earth. Amen. As if it's the last day we have here on this earth. It doesn't matter. It, not, not even when we come to church. Every day we get up. We should live as if it's the last day we have here on this earth. So no matter what we do, we should please God in everything that we do. Pleasing God and not man for us to live is Christ Jesus. So we're not just worshiping when we come into the house of God. We should have a praise every day. In the workplace, in the home, in the kitchen, cooking, no matter where we are. We should have a praise. Hallelujah. It should not be hard to worship God because we should come here worshiping. Hallelujah. We should walk through the doors with our praise and enter into his courts with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations. Hallelujah. Nobody has to pump us to worship God. Nobody has to force us to worship God. It should be a natural thing. <coughs> Hallelujah. It should come natural. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Trouble sometimes I hear. Daily man's heart with fear. Freedom we all hold dear. Now is at stake. Humble your heart to God. Save from the chastening rod. Seek the way pilgrim strut. Christians awake. Jesus is coming soon. Morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom. Trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies, heaven war bound. My Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Trumpets will sound, all of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies, heaven or bound. My Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Baby, 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 baby. Trumpets will sound, all of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies. Heaven were bound, going where no one dies. Heaven were bound, going where no one dies. Heaven were bound. Do you believe that one day you're going where no one dies? What a sweet thing to, to, to realize that, you know, one day, it's a great anticipation to know that one day we are going where no one dies, no more tears, no more heartache, no more pain. Last year, I lost my father. This year, I lost my brother. And, you know, all of that heartache and pain, and when I realized that the Bible said, if in this life only we have hope, we will be of all men most miserable. But, you know, one day, we have a hope that we're going to be with King Jesus. No more pain, no more death, no more dying, no more tears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more heartache. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful feeling. It's a very wonderful feeling. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am. 
am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Your love runs through my veins. I've been born again into your family. Your love has known my name. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody has to guess when they see us, even on the street, to say if we're a child of God. Nobody. <coughs> Sorry have to ask a question. The Bible said we are in this world. We are not of this world. So no matter where we are, in the store, everywhere, we should be identified with Christ. It should not be a second guessing if we are a child of God. The Bible said by the fruit you shall know them. So as children of God, we should be identified with Christ. You know, um, I have this song that I'm going to sing. It's an, it's an old song. But you know, I keep on saying at times that some people are singing on the choir, preaching in the pew, and still on their merry way to hell. Still on their merry way to hell. Some people on their way to hell with heaven on their mind. So saints of God, if we know that we are not living right, let us go to the potter's house. Let us go to the potter's house. Let us put ourselves on the, uh, uh, let him put us on the, on, the, on the wings of his grace and mercy. Because, um, you know, we sin in thoughts, words, and actions. We sin sometimes we don't even realize that we sin. We are living some lives that it seems that it's the right thing we are doing, but it's not. So at times, you know, we need to go back to the potter's house so he can make us over again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. At times, we need to go back to the potter's house so he can make us over again. Because a lot of us, as I said, are sitting in church on our merry way to hell because our lives are not clean. Glory. Hallelujah. Our lives are not clean. What we are doing is not lined up with God. God is not pleased with a lot of us. He's not pleased with us. So today I want to encourage somebody. Go back to the potter's house. If your life is not worth living and your hope is sinking fast, if your feet have crumbled under from the rubble and the blast, take a glimpse into your future. Step away from your past. He will give your life new meaning. He will rescue you at last. Have you been to the potter's house his hand of mercy rescued me the sinful life that i was living oh i know it just wouldn't last then i entered into the potter's house i placed my vessel into his hands on his wings of grace and mercy he made me over again I know 
it took some doing, for I was twisted and I was lean. My countenance was haggard, I was bitter and I was mean. But Jesus placed me on a spindle where my heart began to glean. On his wings of grace and mercy, he made me whole. He made me clean. Have you been to the potter's house? His hand of mercy, he lifted me. The sinful life that I was living, I know it just would not last. Then I entered into the potter's house. I placed my vessel into his hands. On his wings of grace and mercy, he made me over again. I'm going to try to do the first verse again because I, I want to talk to somebody. I want to minister to somebody this morning. Hallelujah. I want to minister to somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You need to go back to the potter's house. Glory. Hallelujah. If your life is not worth living and your hope is sinking fast if your feet have crumbled under from the rubble and the blast take a glimpse into your future step away from your past he will give your life new meaning he will rescue you at last take a glimpse into your future step away hallelujah step away step away from the past glory hallelujah he will give your life new meaning he will rescue you at last have you been to the potter's house, his hand of mercy lifted me. The sinful life that I was living, oh, I know it just wouldn't last. Then I entered into the potter's house. I placed my vessel into his hands. On his wings of grace and mercy, he made me over again. Have you been to the potter's house? His hand of mercy, it lifted me. The sinful life that I was living, oh, I know it just wouldn't last. Then I entered into the potter's house. I placed my vessel into his hands. On his wings of grace and mercy, he made me over again. On his wings of grace and mercy, he'll make you over again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Let go into the potter's house. Put your vest in it into his hand. On his wings of grace and mercy, he'll make you over again. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 No matter what we're going through, God will make us over again. Over again. We could fall down, but we get. The Bible says a wise man fall, but he gets back up. A foolish man will fall one time and he will never get back up. But a wise man will fall seven times and he will get back up because God is with him. So no matter what we're going through, no matter how we stray away, God will make us whole again. Amen. Now it's time for tithes and offering. So um, we're just going to be getting ready to do our tithes and offering. The Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you. 
good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, and give into my bosom. Now, Lord, I am willing and I am able to do all that is according to your will. Father, I am a tither and an offering giver. I give to you, I give to your people, I give cheerfully. Okay? So we have to be cheerful givers. We have to really know what it means to give tithes and offering. A lot of people come to church and they hold back because they think that they're giving money to the churches and it's for the pastors. But let me tell you something. Morning. Malachi 3 tells us that we pay our tithes and offering, God will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour down a blessing that we're not able to contain. Your tithes and offering is not for the pastor, but your tithes and offering is to help to build God's kingdom. And the reason why we pay our tithes and offering is because God has entrusted us with his money. Because we go around and we go to work and we think that it's our money. But God gives to us 100%. And he's asking us back for 10% to help to build the kingdom. 10%, just think about it. If you make $100 and God is saying all I need is $10. $10, he gave you $90. He gave you the $100 first. He wants to know if you're faithful to give him back $10 so that he can bless you. Not just bless you, but bless your children, your children, children. God is so amazing. And when you throw your tithes and offering, just understand that you will see God work in your life. It's not only about money. We are praying to God for so many things. Your tithes and offering is not only so you could gain wealth, but so you can have a prosperous life. That is more than the money. Being able to get up. We came to church this morning. I'm standing here. I have a pain in my back, but it's not stopping me. I need to be in the presence of the Lord to fellowship one to another. I could be at home. I could read the Bible at home. But I tell you this much. God says we could come. We should come in a oneness. Because if I'm here, I'm using myself as an example. And if I have something that I've gone through, I may be able to share my testimony. And you may be strengthened by it. You understand? So at the end of the day, this is why we come together in a oneness to fellowship in spirit and in truth to give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Amen? Amen. Well, Brother Devin, would you like to sing us a song into our tithes and offering? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. It's wonderful to have you here this morning. It's a beauty in Amen. the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give me Jesus in the morning. Give me Jesus in the evening. Every minute of the day. Give me Jesus. He's my reason for living. He's my source of survival. Every minute of the day, give me Jesus. Jesus in the morning, give me Jesus in the evening. Every minute of the day, give me Jesus. He's my reason for living. He's my source of survival. Every minute of the day, give me Jesus. And when my friend forsake me, and when all hope is lost, just call on the name of Jesus. That's where my future lies. 
For he is my reason for living. He is my source of survival. Every minute of the day, give me Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Brother Devin. Amen and amen. Just a quick reminder that for those who want to pay their tithes, their offering, want to sow a seed, you can do through do so through PayPal, Zelle, Cash App, and the phone number to use is 860-634-8557. And I'll repeat that, 860-634-8557. Amen. Amen. Let us all be on our feet as we are about to bless today's tithes and offering. Father God, who art in heaven, as we come before your throne with your blessing that you have blessed us with, Lord God, we just want to say thank you, almighty God, for how great, how awesome you are, Lord Jesus. For this offering and tithe that we lift before you, Lord Jesus, we just want you to bless those who were able to give, Almighty God. And for those who were not in a position to give, Lord, I pray that you may open doors, Lord Jesus, so that next time they'll be able to bless your holy name. I remember I've always saying that your tithe can save you. And today I really genuinely understand what that means, Almighty God. For my tithe has saved me so many times. It has taken me out of some situation. I don't know how I get in it. But Oh, you have taken me out of it. So I just want to say thank you, Almighty God, for how great you are, for how awesome you are, Lord God, as we lift your offering and your ties to your throne. For those who have sown their seed in person and online, Lord, just, we just want to say thank you for their life. We have a church sister who almost lost their life, but Lord Jesus, you came and you rescued them, Lord God. And no one, no one could have said they didn't make it. No one could have said their life was lost. Lord Jesus, and this happened in Jamaica. I don't know who remember this. I don't know who knows the story. But we just want to say thank you, God, for how great you are, for how awesome you are, for how magnificent you are. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, can everyone be on their feet so that we can welcome our reverend? So we can welcome our reverend, Pastor Joycelyn Rattigan. This morning, we welcome you in the care of the Lord. sitting back there and I'm enjoying the service. <laughs> I Amen. wish somebody else was preaching today. I was in, I don't know about any one of you here, but I was enjoying service. And if you are Amen. here because of Jesus, clap for him. <laughs> clap for Jesus. Clap like you know what you're doing. Clap like you understand that your clap can destroy your enemies. Clap like you understand that the problem that you are facing by the clapping of your hands, it can bring healing. It can bring breakthrough. I want you to clap. Clap for Jesus like you know that your clap is a slap to your enemies. I want you to clap like you know that your clap will bring forth whatever you have been asking. King God for mighty God clap for Jesus this is your clap offering clap for Jesus clap Jesus I feel the presence of God in the room. I don't know about you, but if I were you, whatever you have been waiting on for the Lord, be in the spirit to receive it be in the spirit to receive what you desire from God. No man can bless you. No woman can bless you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Good morning and happy Sunday. Do you guys have a babysitter? 
You have a babysitter? Where is the babysitter? The babysitter need deliverance. Somebody clap for Jesus. You got to be careful. Your babysitter needs serious deliverance. Maybe you might not understand what I'm saying because you are not where I am in the spirit. But you, you know, you know, the babysitter needs serious prayers and deliverance. Amen. Jesus, somebody clap for Jesus. You know, the Bible tells us that Jonathan was David's son. I presume Jonathan was David's first son. And so Jonathan had a son named Mephibosheth. Am I pronouncing it right? Yes. Mephibosheth. Shep. And there was war going on. And they had to run. And they had to run with the baby. And the baby fell. The nurse couldn't handle the heat. And the baby fell and became a handicap. Somebody clap for Jesus. I don't know what God is doing. But I pray that whosoever is taking care of your baby. Receive divine deliverance. Jesus. I go there because I want somebody to understand. What God is saying. Amen. Jesus. You know sometimes we do things because we like. We do things because we love. But God is saying. He is still God and he's still on the throne. Hallelujah. Welcome. You're having a wonderful time in the Lord. I see you. My eyes are open. I don't know why God did that. My eyes are open. But if they could get somebody to hold the baby. I want the mother come first. I'm not ready to do the baby, but I want somebody to hold the baby because the mother need to come up here and stretch out. You hey, 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 Jesus. You're not here because you want to. You're here because God brought you. God worked it out so you could be here. Stand on this side. Stand on this side. Sister Babbitt, go stand up behind this woman. This is what God is saying. You got something that she desire. I don't know what it is. Stand up. God said you have something that this woman. I want you to raise your hand before God. You don't have to know her. You don't have to know anybody in this room. Just think about Jesus right now. And what he is trying to heal you. I, I know I was sitting behind you. And I see you are in cramps and all of that. But there, the Lord said there is something in you that needs to come out. Look at me. Open your eyes. What did the doctor say? Baby, you didn't go to the doctor for this. You need to. It's medical. All right? Raise your hand. Raise them. Don't be afraid. Raise them. Ra we're going to pray for her. Hallelujah. Is this your first child? Yes. The first time? Okay. First time getting pregnant? Yes. Let us pray for her. We know you come to get a baby dedicated, but you need prayers. Look at me. When was the last time you've been in church? That's okay. That's fine. God is here, and he wants you to know Jesus loves you. Amen. Jesus, look at me. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. You know, there are some people that will say they're not into any malice with God. Don't say that, okay? He loves you. And God is going to start sending people to prophesy over you. God is going to use her to prophesy in your life. Amen? And when, she, when God is using her, don't look at her as a relative or a sibling. Look at her as a woman of God that God is has chosen to minister to you. You see, if you don't want to go to church, the church will come to you. And that's how much he loves you. Amen? So, people of God, let us pray for this woman. As you are here, be in the spirit. We're not going to pray for her because she's here to do a, get a baby dedicated. Pray for her like she was a family to you. 
Pray for her like you know her a long time. Pray for her like you went to school with her and you run into her today. That is the kind of prayer she need. Pray for her like you know the woman. She cannot see what's going on in the spirit. So we are here to pray. Pray for her like you know her story. Pray for her like you know what God is about to do. Open your mouth and ask God to bless her. Hey Jesus, say I'm a mama kosato, raya baba koshaya. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God, we place your daughter before you. Have mercy upon her. Have mercy upon her, Lord. Have mercy upon her, Lord. Show mercy to your daughter today. Let it be well with her, Daddy Jesus. Give her peace. Give her peace, Lord. Give her peace. Give her peace. Mighty God. Give her peace, Daddy Jesus. Let it be well with this woman, my God. Have mercy. Show mercy. Oh, Jesus, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, we ask you, Lord, to have mercy upon her. Let your will be done in her life today. Jesus. 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 Hey, show mercy, Lord. Oh, God, you said you show mercy to who you want to show mercy to. You say you show mercy, Lord God, to who you want to show mercy to. And today we ask you in the name of Jesus. Christ.